Welcome back to What Would You Do? The show where we talk about real issues from real leaders and then we ask the question, what would you do? So, Kurt, today I'm going to make a little twist on this because this uh -huh. is our show. Yeah. We can it's break the rules. It's brand new and we're already breaking yep. the rules. And Ben and Carson can just deal with it, right? <laughs> that's right. So, uh, that's right. I want to ask... Because to be clear, good leaders just make their people deal with that's it. That's right. We just make it up as we go. <laughs> so, here's the deal. Um, today I want to ask you, what do you think... I would do in this situation. Ooh, a flip. A flip. And then we're going to bridge it into maybe a conversation here okay. about what would you do. So uh, would you agree, first of all, just a question, would you agree that as a leader, it is in our best interest to partner with a specialist at times to avoid unnecessary risks or threats or problems that we might be facing that at times we, we should probably... Yes, the at times there is probably doing some heavy lifting for me. Yeah, but yeah, there's certainly times when I would recommend yeah. that. So, so here's a scenario. What do you think I would do in this situation? Okay. So, I have a drippy shower faucet that has been dripping now for over two years, and my wife has asked me a number of times, "Can you fix that or call the plumber?" So finally, this week I called the plumber and scheduled the appointment. But then once I did that, I had this, I had this little curiosity in me, like, what if I could repair that leak myself without the plumber? So of course I went to YouTube and Googled my shower faucet and, and looked it up and I found a video straight from Delta. It's a Delta faucet, perfectly packaged, my faucet. And I'm like, this guy makes it look really easy. So what do you think I would do in that moment? Do you think I would keep the plumber on schedule or do you think I would take my hand at trying to do that repair myself? I think you would do both. I think you would totally keep the plumber on schedule. I'm assuming the plumber's coming in a day or so and you're going to actually try to sneak your repair in <laughs> knowing you've got to get out of jail free card because the plumber can come. And I think you would totally <laughs> dig into it and you would work it and try to do that unless you didn't have, okay, so that's my first answer. I think yep. you try to do both. The caveat to that is if the plumber was coming say on a Wednesday and it was Monday when this happened and you didn't have time till the weekend, that's a nuance that I think uh, I would then say, it's, you said, oh, it's been yeah. two years. You took the time to actually Google it out of curiosity. So there's a motive at work where you actually revealed wow, right you're, there. You're really breaking this down. I'm trying to. <laughs> where you revealed right there that you actually feel you should do it. <laughs> and I think you would, I think what you would do is recognize, wait a minute, the plumber's coming. In this scenario, the plumber's coming on Wednesday. You can't get there to it till the weekend. So I think you would Google it. I think you would learn how. I think that is all being driven by a should. I think you would figure that out on Tuesday and go, what am I doing? Clearly, I'm not going to fix this because I haven't for two years. And you'd set it down and you'd walk away and you let the plumber fix it on Wednesday. Well, I love your thought process. But okay. one thing that you failed to integrate into your thinking about me and analyzing me is I am a P. <laughs> right. Uh, explain P on the Myers Briggs. Right. So P and J is the ending initials, and uh, J is judging. I think P mm -hmm. is perceiving. Mm -hmm. That's right. And so I approach, I approach life That's without right. really thinking too far ahead. Uh, I tend to just go for it in the moment. So of course, your first answer was right. I figured I'd take my hand and it leave the leave the plumber online. So I did. That that happened actually this morning, and I bought the part, eighty four dollar part. Thought I'd save the hundred and fifty dollar call just in case I could do this myself, and it was very easy. Took it apart, got the cartridge in, but as a DIYer, not a specialist, I made one tiny error. Uh, first of all, I tried to do this while everyone was still sleeping in the house. Okay. So it's in the morning. I can get this done in 15 minutes. That's a joke right there. It's not going to be 15 minutes. Um, walk out to my water line, turn off the main, come in, pull out the cartridge, get it all in, go back out to the water line, turn the water back on thinking I'm walking back in. And my wife is panicking in the house, towels everywhere. And I hear water gushing. Yeah. So immediately I turn around, run out back to the water main, turn it off only to realize I didn't put the threaded collar over the new cartridge that went into the valve. So as soon as the pressure went on, it shot across the shower, <laughs> shattered into 
four or five pieces <laughs> and the water literally is have you seen how much water comes out of, yes i have yeah it's gushing like <laughs> it's a fire a hydrant. hydrant it's a mini fire hydrant so in this in this moment what i did is i didn't connect or i didn't follow through with the specialist and it did cost me um, and so, so what I want to kind of hand over to you is as business owners, this is kind of a, a funny example, but it does connect, I think, as mm-hmm. we grow as, as leaders, you know, when are those times or, or, or what, how would you coach a client and what they should do uh, when maybe partnering with a specialist or not? And there's lots of scenarios where that might pop up, but I want to kind of pass it on to you. Yeah. Of, what are some of the conditions that would lead to those decisions? What this raises for me is a question of, a, of, of our origin sort of ideology, how we think the world works. We, we come into the world with a, with a frame of what is the good and what is the bad. And one of the things that a lot of people are doing when they're running a business is they're running it through that original personal framework. And there's a framework that says DIY is best. It's always best to do it yourself. Um, you get to learn. You get to be the master, gain mastery in it. It's less expensive. It's and and there's a style of business that that's actually appropriate for, and it's right. And a lot of people, when they're in small business or just getting started, that's their mindset. There's another mindset that thinks about it completely differently, and they think about leverage. How do I leverage my resources and and leverage other people, and then that's an appropriate way to do things as well and you got to figure out which what's appropriate but if your starting point is your ideology or your worldview or the way you were raised you're going to miss this and i think what you just described is the diy is best scenario yeah, sure. you felt kind of like you should do it you should at least give it a try and uh, obviously in this case that was the, <laughs> yeah the mistake. poor decision <laughs> um that's a very blue collar mindset. It's a middle class mindset. It's a limited resource mindset where it's like you, you want to get things done. You don't have the money to do it. So you figure it out yourself. And it's a brilliant way to live. It's a, it's wonderful. But to actually grow and scale a business, and that's where you have to decide which one you're doing. If you're trying to actually grow and really scale something, you can't possibly run a business that yeah. way. Well, I think too, it's I think you're right. There is a blue collar side to that where I think uh, sometimes we emerge out of that and we don't, we don't, we, we emerge out of that from our resources, but our mindset doesn't grow into that. And so we still kind of live between two places where we have the resources now. Right. We don't have to function as a blue collar. But, but like for me, in this case, I think too, there's other motives at play okay. that might be at play for other leaders and see if, see if you've ever come across this, but where it's just this sense of I'm, I'm responsible to do certain things, you know, and, and there is a level where it's my house. This seems easy. I should be able to do this kind of kicks in maybe a little more of a pride than blue collar. I mean, I don't know. Like, well, what do you think about that? Blue collar is one way to think of middle class is another way to think about it, but it's limited resources. Right. I think the reason I still think it's driven by the, well, let's say it this way. Who told you it was your responsibility to fix things in your house? Yeah. Yeah. Where'd that come from? Yeah, I mean, it's a it's a father and mother thing growing up. You're right. We're it's a mimicking, value. We're yeah. mimicking, mm-hmm. and and I think it is a value, and I think it is valuable. I am not diminishing yeah. that notion, but when we bring that into um, constructing a business that we want to scale, that's where we get into trouble. Yeah. When all roads lead to Mitch, it's your company, it's your responsibility. Yeah. Um, that's the problem. It's like, wait a minute. Yeah. So, and, and, and even if you're trying to impress, like, which I don't know that at this point I was trying to impress my wife. I don't <laughs> think I was, but well, let's just play that card. Okay. Uh, sometimes that can, that, that, that desire to impress can lead to making really big mistakes that we can't recover from. Yeah. You so uh, there's a, um, hmm. I think this is one of the, one way to diagnose the source, the, the symptom of all roads lead to the owner problem in a business. When all roads lead to the owner, the owner's taking responsibility for everything. And that's that at some level of activity is actually really brilliant and beautiful and, and fine. And actually, I would coach people to do that if that's the result you want, if that's the style of business and the business model that you're building, I have no problem with that. But if you're trying to build a business that transcends the owner, where the business is bigger, or the way I always talk about this is there's businesses that people run that literally fit in their mind. They can 
fit the business in. They know the numbers. They can feel it. They can touch all the people. Sure. Right? It's a small enough thing that it fits in your mind. But if you want to build a business that will transcend you, bigger than you, then it's not going to fit in yeah. your mind anymore. And then you have to be able to not, well, that's the thing. It's not that you're losing responsibility. You're probably losing something like control. And we make a distinction between, is this your job or is this your responsibility? Yeah. And those are different things. Yeah. So we make a difference between, is this your job, meaning a task you need to do, or is it your responsibility? And owners are often responsible for everything, but do almost nothing. And that's weird to say it that way. So we, I talk about leadership. A, a great leader is someone who gets really good at doing nothing at all, which it turns out is a full-time job. Yeah. <laughs> And the, people like the first half of that. It sounds like the four-hour work week and I get to just go away and passive income and all that. No, 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 no. Doing nothing at all, it turns out, is a full-time job. And what's that work? And I don't know that that's a direct correlation to should you do the plumbing sure, or not. Sure, right. But it might be. Yeah. <laughs> is it your job or is it your responsibility? Yeah. And I would probably, you and your wife would probably agree that getting the plumbing fixed was your responsibility. Yeah. You might disagree now whether or not it was your job. Yeah. Okay, great. So that works, what you're saying. But I brought up a plumbing situation. Yeah. People listening in, obviously, are leading in different capacities. So how do, we, how do we identify moments where we might need to bring in a specialist? Yeah. I would say it's complex to know when to do that. But it's things like this. One would be when we need to buy a level of expertise that we can't afford full time. So you might need someone to come in and help you develop a really robust marketing strategy, but not necessarily help you implement it. You might be able to do the implementation yourself, but you need this point of view of somebody who has done this precise thing before. And, and, and but, but we're not going to hire that person full time to join the team. They're yeah. just far too expensive. Um, I've seen people encounter legal trouble where they try to deal with it themselves and they hang themselves in the yeah. process. And if they had just to go spend $1,500 on a few hours of legal work, it would have resolved beautifully yeah. or at least easy, more easily. Um, so it's when you're trying to buy expertise, but you don't need it full time. A time you don't want to do it is when you actually need the learning curve and you need that knowledge built into your company. You actually need to actually go, go through all the pain and suffering right. of blowing out plumbing parts so that you can learn because it's a core function of your business. Um, in that case, I would not advise it. I think you actually want to build that competency sure. into your organization. Yeah. Um, I think there's places where you're running an experiment. So this is a reason that you might want to do it, where you actually want to run an experiment to see if that's a direction you should go and you want to pre-experience it. And so you go work with a specialist, someone that can show you sort of the arena and then decide if you want to enter the arena or not. So it's it's things like that. Sometimes speed is the driver. And, when, and it turns out in a lot of situations, speed matters and we just don't have time to learn it. And so you bring in a specialist because they can deliver it at... Yes, it's going to be a lot more expensive, but they can get it done faster. They can get it done now, and you can then capture the opportunity, and the and the opportunity will pay for that specialist if it works. But if you took the year or two it takes to build the competency in yourself, you just miss the opportunity. And there's an ROI on specialists that you can calculate. Yeah. So there you have it, another episode of What Would You Do, where we talk about a real-life leadership situation, and we just bounce it off to one another, what would you do in that situation? We want to hear what you would do, not related to my plumbing experience. <laughs> we already know what you'd probably do there, but just related to working with the specialist, maybe a situation you might be running into, a question you have. Hit us up on our comments. We'd love to hear from you. See you soon.